Good morning, everybody. My name is Kandelun, and I'm working here as a research department uh, uh, leader. Uh, and uh, also, I'm teaching mathematics and statistics in here, and also the basic science and, and so. And this is my first project, and I'm very happy to have this kind of uh, nice people to support I me in Estonia and also the foreign uh, lands. So, I just give you, give Kai of the microphone, all the presentation, just hold the microphone. So, good morning, everybody, it's one and, and all, and Tere Hommikust, and you are really warmly welcome to our seminar, Pro Competence, promoting client-centered um, competence, and who we are here in, in the auditorium. So we are people from four different countries, from Estonia, from uh, Sweden, uh, from Norway, and from Finland. And uh, my name, Kandela said already that uh, I'm Kaija Batin Heikki Kokko, and I come from Helsinki, Metropolia University of Applied Sciences. Uh, we are coordinator in, in this project. And then I thought that I tell uh, some background of uh, our pro competence project. And the aim you can already see it is promote client centered competence building. And uh, where we have uh, implemented this uh, uh, promoting and this client centered uh, competence learning, so it is in the context of student work placement uh, in social, healthcare, education, and preschool uh, education sector. That is the field. And uh, the idea is that uh, we are doing it uh, that together with uh, teachers students, work placement mentors, and clients. And uh, why to promote client-centered competence? So the idea is there that uh, uh, we would like to address the needs of clients and to look at uh, this uh, service building, this service design from the perspective of client to change uh, the perspective from uh, and, and look all the services, how they look to the client. Not take that kind of uh, organization-centered perspective, but uh, to look uh, from the side of clients. To perfectly implement the service design idea obviously would mean a very good high quality services which match the users or the clients need okay so that also they are happy and yeah, so the, the five sort of principles what is service uh, design what we are aiming at is, is quality in the processes, so there has to be some certain sequencing of the service provision. Sequencing means, you know, to put it into phases, the process into phases. It has to be a holis holistic approach, so you include everybody, all the stakeholders. We think we do, but the assumption behind this project is that we don't do it, and, or at least we could do it much better. User-centeredness, Point three. Really, we should have the persons that we're serving uh, in the center, sort of bottoms up approach. Let's start from them and their needs when we design our service. We have our views and our competence, and they have their needs and their views. Co creative, so let's create it together. Uh, that, that's a way to create ownership to the services so that it becomes our thing not just something that we pay for. And there has to be evidence that it's, for, it's working, so, uh, so there should be follow-up and feedback that makes us sure that we have evidence that this works and this works well.
students to find to think about their learning needs. Which again, we can think that it's, the, the students aren't necessarily aware of that, right? Uh, how can they know what they don't know? How can they know what they don't know that they need to know? I mean, they might read that they, there's so much to know and they know that they don't know enough, but what should they know of what there is to know of, you know? I could go on, but, um, but really this uh, needs, uh, it's, it's always and everywhere, it's a tricky thing to try to measure the needs or make people aware of their needs. We have the new tools and gadgets, but we use it in a very traditional way, sorry to say. And teachers find it the hardest to, to let go. Okay, uh, but you have to let go and let them learn. Like uh, probably a, 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 a good thing is shocking, shocking them, let them out there and let, be them, let them be shocked and uh, then come back and tell you. Now I'm the last year student, but in May when I did my internship, I was just a second second course student, and I knew that I had to do my internship like one month, and I had to choose the place where to do that. And before that, I didn't know, I didn't know anything about that kind of organization in Perno, like Shalom, and. When I went there, I was totally shocked. And then I'm like explaining to them that life is not as easy as they, they think it is. Like, the life is not only this thing that you can manipulate with your parents and so on, and you're going to hang on the streets and so on. You have to actually do something. You, you don't have to jump you don't have to jump like this that much you just have to take the life like step by step you have to finish your fifth grade after that you have to finish your sixth grade and so on I mean for me it's really good to to talk with them to share what I have done in my life like wrongly and so on and who I am right now and where I am right now I'm the last year student of social and rehabilitation management and I was the messy girl a years back. So I'm telling those those stories for them so so many times and every time they are listening like listening like wow okay okay Uh, so uh, this was a private kindergarten but they get support from the public sector so uh, uh, so uh, it, they are not separate two systems uh, in the society. But um, they were focusing on how do the parents choose this kindergarten for their children and not the other one which is just uh, a kilometer away or something. And the survey showed that uh, parents are looking to different things like attitudes and, uh, and, and that kind of things. Whereas the staff in the kindergarten thought that it's only our competence that they will see and they will look at when they choose the kindergarten. Well, how would they know about the competence? You know, you don't, you show it only in the practice, in a way. But anyway, so there were interesting results in the, from there, um, the kindergarten uh, side. But her conclusion is also that there was a lot of learning um, and on all of these levels, the, the high school, the, the university college level, and the teachers, also the teacher, her Marta, as a, as a teacher, and the students. Students reported of a very interesting project. They, were, they, they told us in Haugesen when they gave the presentation that they were, obviously, they were very uh, privileged that they not only were part of this project and learned more than their, their, their co-students, but they also got much more closer supervision and, and help from the teachers because of this process, uh, project. And my um, main goal was to uh, positively reinforce the children so that they would have some sort of self-confidence to, to show what they want 
to other children and also to people who are working there. First I interviewed, at the first time, I interviewed that what children would like to have and what kind of uh, plays, role plays or um, activities in, in all. And um, children gave me many choices and, and it was very nice because uh, as they were boys from three to four year old, I was expecting like uh, gymnastics and cars and like things like that. But actually they said that they would like to play uh, house, home, with, um, with the kitchen tools. And they were like, uh, let's play with dolls. Of course other things as well, but um, this surprised me quite much. That I was expecting them to do something, but they were quite nice boys to work with. And after every uh, session, I was gathering information that how did this feel and what would you like to have more and how could we develop this thing that if we were playing next time the same play. And uh, boys, first they didn't have any opinion, they were just like, okay, now she's asking and, and I'm, I'm supposed to know something, but um, they were quiet. But during the process they were giving more and more information to me and this uh, is the picture that shows that interaction is in both ways. I think there should be one line to the parents from students and supervisors as well but somehow we were so um, centered with the group and with the student and supervisor that we didn't think that parents are always in, in, in the processes even though they sometimes act in the background. almost 25 percent of the children and, st and students have uh, uh, foreign backgrounds. So this uh, view and these uh, experiences and this knowledge is very needed for us. And uh, to, if you are thinking of uh, in terms of client-centered. So the first thing we were thinking about was at a, who is client? And um, the client is an, a recip recipient for a service who also actively contributes to improvement of quality and added value. The client can be both internal or external. We are your higher education and institution. We have your students, students our uh, internal clients. But what we want to that they increase their competence is the, how they can uh, uh, interact with the parents with foreign background uh, and uh, how we get this uh, design. Uh, the, it's also research design and also the learning design for us that we can we can um, uh, focus on this interaction. So uh, parents and the kindergartens and preschool <coughs> and preschool teachers, they are the, our external uh, clients. And the first thing is uh, awareness and knowledge of uh, uh, multicultural things. You know, some concept, for example, Multicultural, intercultural, multicultural, ethnicity, 
uh, bilingual uh, concepts, the knowledge that you have some some uh, some uh, horizons to look things from, but you have must have it uh, f maybe from the from the uh, institute. And uh, the other thing is uh, what you are doing, action and experiences, your intentions. Uh, that is very important, that if you have a competence, you must show your competence. And the third part is uh, skill and competencies, attitudes, uh, communication skills, uh, and uh, interaction uh, skills, and uh, things. Did this project, um, we wanted to uh, increase the students' knowledge and skills on intercultural competence. And, and I guess we also can say that these purposes goes beyond this project. Obviously, we wanted to increase the knowledge and awareness of those students who actually participated in this project. But also, you know, in the longer run, how can we work with this more actively in the future? Because as we will be talking in the results, this is something that, well, there is a service gap that Norway also was talking about. And we, we have the same kind of situation, I guess, in Sweden. Uh, we also wanted to increase the teacher educators' knowledge about how the, how the preschool teacher education meets the needs and goals to work at a multicultural preschool. So what does preschool teachers uh, working in, in the area of Maladolin need today? What kind of competencies and skills do they need uh, <coughs> to, to interact with, the, with the, both teachers, um, children and, and parents especially from diverse uh, cultural backgrounds. And if we look at the, uh, the legislation, uh, the Education Act, as well as the curriculum for the preschool, it's actually quite clear that this is something that is very much uh, focused and emphasized in the legislation. But how to work, how to actively do this, the doing, uh, is not stated. Only that this is important that you should, you're obligated to work this way. So the Education Act uh, stipulates that the preschool should help to ensure that children with a mother tongue other than Swedish receive the opportunity to develop both their Swedish language and their mother tongue. And moving on to the fundamental values and tasks of the free Swedish preschool, and this is from the, from the curriculum for the preschool, and you can see the same things are stated here. And the preschool can help to ensure that children from national minorities and children with a foreign background we received the support to, to developing a multicultural sense of identity, both their own inheritance uh, as well as the Swedish culture. So everybody who is working in the preschool, from the director uh, to the preschool teachers and also the, the child minders, as a team, they should work towards collaborating with the parents to speak and have a dialogue with parents uh, of the activities in the preschool, the tasks and values, uh, and usually um, the students in the, their field practice schools, they have, they have one, they can, um, they can wish for some specific, but usually they, um, they will just get one uh, because there needs to be uh, educated tutors at the, the field practice school. Uh, and they will stick to that school during their whole education for three and a half years. Maybe have preschool teachers or parents coming to give, to give lectures. Yeah, it was just the example about the client-oriented uh, uh, approach. I was asked yesterday in a restaurant, red or white, and it is. They want to know my will. Hello, my name is Christy Olino, and I'm from Pärnu uh, uh, Shalom uh, Children House, and this is uh, the shelter. And, uh, daily center for children from risk families. And uh, I'm very appreciate that uh, our, our house was called to this project because this was a very valuable project for us. 
because this gave us opportunity to see uh, how the things is going with practitioners places in Norway and in Finland and in Sweden and uh, and uh, this was very good uh, very good experience for 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 me and uh, I hope uh, for the practitioners who was in uh, in our house too and uh, and uh, and this project uh, gave us opportunity to think more about client-centered. We done uh, before things. We we um, uh, we got feedback from parents every year. We done sometimes a research uh, with children what they want to do. But uh, this uh, uh, this experience uh, uh, to be in this project gave us opportunity to think. Uh, a client center uh, for these uh, children and families who are in our house uh, and at uh, the same uh, time to the students uh, who are in the house too because um, uh, the students who are coming uh, to our house to be as a practitioners uh, they are uh, different they are very different persons and they are different uh, needs too as a practitioners and uh, and um, and uh, like some uh, uh, like some and we have a different background too uh, and the first meeting we had there was more than we three we were talking about what we are going to study what we are going what what do you we want to know more because we, we, we knew quite many things, but we wanted to know something more. So we chose some shared points of interest. And the first one was we wanted to know more uh, about the learning environment in the kindergarten. And we wanted to uh, analyze somehow what it is uh, from the point of view of a student. And because it's a kindergarten, we wanted to know about the uh, learning environment uh, from the children's point of view. Interaction happens in many ways and on a daily basis. And parents' concrete participation in the everyday life at daycare centers has increased. For example, soft starts. Parents bring their own knowledge for the use of children and it's now quite new in our kindergarten. Uh, the project uh, we used, uh, or we focused on the on the practice period, right? When the students are out there in the real world, as a part of their study. So this has really uh, uh, again strengthened our our. Uh, understand we we have become even more convinced of the learning value of these practice periods They're extremely important and they bring the theory and practice together the next thing is then about the well, the next two things are about the role uh, uh, clarifications or, or the role perspective the teachers role the students role uh, but here you now the teachers role uh, this kind of uh, service design principle and thinking to really implement it in a perfect way challenges the traditional teaching role. We wouldn't want to admit that we still are very traditional teachers, but that's a sad reality. <laughs>